Well, hello, folks out there in YouTube land. Got a big show lined up for you, and let's get right on into it. All right, let's pull up this screen here. It appears Heupel has started shopping, and he's gone to some places I was not expecting, but um, he's got some very interesting picks here that I think are going to be helpful short-term and long-term. So let's get into this. Now, when I saw these names, I was like, who the hell are these people? Pardon my French. You don't need to hear things like that. You're just a boy. You need to think about good thoughts while you're still a boy. But I didn't have a clue. Now, the Indiana guy, Chad Campbell, as you see in this picture, he's uh, got one year of eligibility left, and he's about a 70% field goal kicker, and he's got a real big leg. He can hit the long ones. And I think that'll be good on kickoffs, especially because if you noticed this year, there were many times we were having to kick the ball uh, short because we were having a tough time getting it all the way into the end zone. So I think that'll be helpful there. But this guy's rock solid and has been for many years. And let's take a look at his stats. As you can see here, he's been anywhere around 70%. He had one year, he only kicked it like 11 times, so he was at 90%. But he's a pretty good solid kicker with one year left of eligibility. And you can see he's been pretty consistent, but right there, four for five from 40 to 49, and he has hit a couple over 50 yards. So this guy's got a big leg, and uh, he makes all his extra points too. So I think that's just a good, smart pickup, and it's basically what he did last year uh, when he picked up Chase McGrath, and McGrath did great. Look, he was an excellent kicker this year. That seems to be the path he likes to go as far as Coach Heupel, so I'm fine with that. I think that's a good pickup. He, he checks off a box that's very important, and it may not seem important until you need that three points, and then it's critical. And everybody remembers Alabama game when he hit the – I think somebody got a piece of that, though, but it went in. That's the only thing that matters. Now, this next guy, Larry Johnson the third. this guy is a big, big man. Holy crap, this guy is huge. It's huge. Enormous. It's gigantic. And they said it was big, but I didn't expect it to be big. That's right. I mean, that's, that's as big an offensive lineman as you'll ever see in your life. And the offensive coordinator and offensive line coach at Hutchinson uh, Community College, which is where we've picked up some great players in the past, has said this guy could be a draft pick in four years and he could play in the NFL for up to 10 years. He said he's uh, got a lot of physical skills. He said he moves very well for the, his size. Said he's got a nastiness to him. If you're going to play in the SEC, you'd better be nasty. Said if Larry does what Larry needs to do, he's a very accountable kid. He's very mature for his age. Said he's been through some stuff in his life, but he uh, has grown tremendously. Said he will be a draft pick in four years if he works at it the way I know Larry can. He was a full qualifier academically coming out of high school, so he didn't go to Hutchinson because of that. And they're blaming the virus as why he got overlooked, which maybe that's the case. But I can tell you this much, size is a skill and it is a talent, especially in the SEC. So he's more than big enough to handle about anybody out there. The question is, is can he develop? And this is obviously a developmental guy that you hope over the next 12 to 24 months becomes an important starter for you. You know, we'll see. He might end up being a real good quality backup or he may be a bust. Who knows? We don't, we don't know. But I'm fine with starting out with somebody that's that big because you've got a lot to work with there. So... You know, we'll see how it goes, but they obviously felt good enough to offer, and uh, the offensive line's been pretty solid, so I'm going to have to trust them on that. Now we're going to talk about the combine freak. Now this guy, the tight end Castles out of UC Davis, he's a former four-star recruit that uh, went to California, and then he wound up transferring to UC Davis, and he's six foot five, two forty, so he's he's a big dude. But on top of that, the best attribute he has is he's. He's really fast. I mean, like shockingly fast for that size. And Paul Shelton, the tight ends coach, said the Vols are getting a combine freak in Castles. And he'll help him reach to a pretty high ceiling by allowing him to face high-level competition on a daily basis. He said this guy's an NFL prospect. Um, some people have him going in as high as a third or fourth round. And he's been timed at a 4.67 to 4.68 40-yard dash. For somebody that size, that is shockingly fast. I remember when I grew up, I used to play some football before I uh, moved over to golf because I wasn't really big enough to play football long term. But we had a guy by the name of Andy Moon out of Greenville High School, and he could run a 4-5-40, which back in the 1980s, that was unbelievably fast. And he played quarterback. And he wound up going to Alabama of all places. But that guy was so fast, I almost couldn't believe it. He looked like a blur going through the uh, field. And this guy's 240 pounds and can run a 4.67. That's crazy because Andy probably weighed 170 pounds. 
This guy's 240 and six foot five. So that's really amazing that he's that quick. So the guy can jump, he can run. He's almost as fast as any receiver we had at UC Davis. And we had some good receivers. Said he can definitely catch the ball. Said he's very dynamic athletically. He is very much said he can absolutely block. Very strong. Said he's a great kid. That coach is excited to see what he can do in the SEC. Said Castles made the senior bowl watch list going into this season. He caught 30 passes for 350 yards. And he's had over 300 yards last two seasons. So he definitely can catch the ball. I don't think that's a problem. And his former high school coach said he's very, very athletic. And he's pretty high on him, too. Let's see. He was the number 14 tight end back in 2018. So, again, there's Heupel. When it comes to receivers, he wants speed. That's always his big issue is trying to find the fastest guys he can, whether it's Squirrel White. Or, you know, look what he did with Jalen Hyatt. You know, speed is, is hard to come by, and it's extremely important. And in the offense that we run, it can kill you. Because if you're on defense against us and you make one bad step, which is really easy to do, we're by you. We're gone. See you. And if our quarterback hits you, it's over. Now, there's one other tight end I'd like to see him get. And look, of course, I know we need to uh, stack up defensive backs like this, like I said, like Cordwood. And I'm sure that's what they're going to be doing next. But they went ahead and took care of some need. Uh, obviously, a kicker, a tight end who is very, you know, that I think looks like he's going to be great. Now, there's one other tight end I'd like to see him get, and it's this fella. This is Jaheim Bell. And uh, this guy was a nightmare for us this year. And he plays tight end, but he also can run the ball really well. He's sort of that guy that can play and do about anything, a la Princeton Fant. And let me show you the numbers that, <laughs> that he did against us. You can see here he caught five passes for about 40 yards, but he ran the ball 17 times for 82 yards, and he runs angry. Don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Let me tell you something. When he gets a hold of the ball, it gets tough. And he was a little bit underutilized at South Carolina, and I think that's why he's in the transfer portal, but that would be a really good pickup. Extremely athletic, can run the ball if you need him to. You know, a short yardage situation, a big, big dude. And like I say, runs very angry. So I think that'd be a nice pickup for him too. But, you know, now it's time to move on to the defensive backs and all the other positions of need. But it's nice to pick up those three players so quickly in the transfer portal. And I think we'll probably end up with somewhere between six, maybe as high as 10 or 12 out of the transfer portal this year. We'll see. But, you know, the first three are taken care of. And you needed a kicker. That had to be done. You need some offensive linemen. You need a good quality tight end. You really need two of those. And uh, on top of that, we need some wide receivers and, of course, defensive backs and possibly a quarterback as well. So, you know, a good quality start, I think. I like these guys. Um, they're a little bit under the radar, not the kicker, but the other guys. And, you know, we'll see what happens with them. But at this point, I'm going to trust Josh Heupel on this. And I think he's proven he knows how to find some good quality players because the beautiful thing about the transfer portal is this is our opportunity to take a step up. And there's over 1,000 guys in the portal right now, and a bunch of them are really good. And we need to find them. And the Vols is a great landing spot for you because not only are we really good with a 10-2 and two, uh, season and a great offense, we got a lot of holes to fill. Whereas if you go to Georgia, Alabama, you know, wherever, you're not going to get to play. If you're leaving somewhere because you weren't getting to play, you're certainly not going to play there. We've got some glaring needs, and yet we're really good. So we are a very unique situation for transfers, and they need to be looking at us just as hard as we are at them. You know, really, you would be fortunate if you get a spot at the Vols right now if you're a transfer guy because there's playing opportunity here, especially in the defensive backfield that you may not get anywhere else. And you need to think about that if you want to go to the NFL. I can tell you this much. Look what it did for Hendon Hooker. That's a guy that got benched at Virginia Tech, and he would have won the Heisman had he not torn his ACL in the next to last game. So if you're out there and you're looking for an opportunity, it's pretty obvious the Vols is the number one destination in the country, period. I don't even think it's close. Ew, get off of me. Ugh, as if. All right, folks, just an update on the transfer portal and three guys that have committed to the Vols. And a uh, good start. And uh, we got a long way to go in this process. But you know what? You got to get started somewhere. And I think uh, they're doing just fine so far. And if you like this content, be sure to hit that like button. Let's me know to continue to cover the Vols, the SEC, the transfer portal, and all kinds of things. And if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. I would appreciate it. And I hope you did like the content. We'll see you next time on Sports Talk Jay.